Welcome back to the Spark Film Show. We have now been joined by Joe. What's up? Uh, you're busy. I'm busy, man. I understand. I'm sorry. Uh, but we couldn't not have you here because, let's face it, you have been... Dying to see some of us all. Oh, yeah. Oh, and, yeah. and finally we have seen Son of Saul let's talk about it now then Son of Saul I think before we go into this we need to quickly mention the Tarkovsky season for you because obviously you weren't oh, here for the film yeah. news were you I, I am spent um, yeah. yeah Tarkovsky they're doing a massive retrospective after all of our work sanded in as well yeah yeah I think it's. I think it starts mm-hmm. on the 20th 20, 20th of May 20th of May yep. yeah I, yeah. I cannot, yeah. Oh, unbelievable so Joe has finally seen Son of Saul we've all finally seen Son of Saul are you, no, are you no longer dying just to be clear uh no 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 I'm not dying I'm just like you just you uh, I mean you only <laughs> <have> to... <laughs> yeah just, great how's that effect great well that that's also the effect that we felt after watching Son of Saul because you know it's just like that it so it, basically Son of Saul is directed by Laz Norma Mesh who was uh, I guess like the student of Bellatar he yeah, studied him he was uh, he's the apprentice <laughs> of Bellatar but he, I think he was the cinematographer in a lot of his films I think like the man from London yeah those types so I mean if, if you want to learn from somebody you can't really get better than learning from the man who did the chew and horse and Satan tangle so he's done pretty well for himself there and mm. we've heard a lot of massive praise and just general hype towards this film I mean there's been some reviews saying what will go down in history as the greatest ever Palme d'Or winner that never was yeah so you know I mean, to be fair did win an Academy Award and a Golden Globe yeah I mean that was I mean <laughs> Carol missed out at the same time. Fair yeah. News. So I, no, no, yeah, yeah. Carol missed out at the same time, and um, Deepan as well. Mm-hmm. No, 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 Deepan no, won. Deepan, Deepan won. won. Yeah, yeah. There was, so. there was a lot of big films. A lot, lot of big films, but yeah, in, yeah. in Son of Saul, it's it's another Holocaust film, and I know they've got a reputation, but this one tries to do something generally different. Basically, it's presented in Academy ratio, which is it's not quite four three. Just isn't it? It, it's bit. It's it's so minute. Basically, yeah. it's so minute. And basically, in this drama, it's a concentration camp inmate played by Geza Rorig. It was, was his first ever. First ever film. He's, yeah. a, yep. he's a poet, isn't he? Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm. He's a poet. He's a poet. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, there you go. He plays the, t- the title of Saul, who is basically he's an inmate. Tamp- uh, he is. Uh, it's sort of um, Sonder Commando. That was the phrase described. But was it basically yeah, it's, it's in the yeah. German concentration camps? It's a group of Jews who have been tasked with doing a lot of the manual work and a lot of the labour for the Germans, while a lot of the other Jewish population inside the camps are being horrifically I, I don't want to you know everybody you, knows, you know everybody the knows. tragedy of the holocaust yes so basically here's the concentration camp in mere task of burning the dead and he discovers the body of his young son and he must eventually choose between participating in an uprising with the other Sunder commandos to free all of the jewish population in the concentration camps and rise up against the, the nazis and basically secure a proper jewish burial for his child after he's found a rabbi in the constant flow of the jewish population coming into the concentration camps it's haunting yeah. that is the, the the one word that you can describe son of saul with the most it it leaves with you an imprint that you just you don't forget because i mean given that it is geza Rorig's first ever acting role it's just astounding to think that i mean just like when we saw in catch me daddy first ever lead mm-hmm. yeah, for that like it, you, you've got to think that sometimes if you bring sort of the natural talent of the four in your first ever acting gig you've got to have something there and this is i think especially for this film you've really got to when 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 the power of the film is the fact of the the face when a lot of the shots are close up you know the vast majority of the mm. film is done in close up to have yeah. that kind of raw emotion in your face when sometimes words don't even you know aren't even needed for him to do that is quite exceptional isn't mm-hmm. it uh, i know but um, obviously this is a story that i mean it's difficult to find new ways to sort of approach the holocaust because it's been done many many times and and just generally world war 2 i mean i watched come and see just a couple of weeks ago and I'm still having nightmares about that film. So this was just what you needed really wasn't it to get out of your mind? <laughs> yeah I know I mean come and see Remains is probably the best war film I've ever seen and just just one of the most genuinely horrific films I've ever seen and Son of Saul I mean you've got to when you're approaching this topic have something fresh to do it and Nemesh, Nemesh comes up with something here that is so simple in, in concept the fact that it is just a man over two days in Auschwitz in 1944 who just wants to bury his son rather than sort of be part of this mm. uprising I mean, obviously there is the mental struggle between jews and what to do whether he wants to you know, free all of the jewish population or just do the right thing for his son and you know by his by his religion but you know it's just it is so simple but yeah it's it's so haunting and properly unsettling when you've in the background you don't quite see a lot of the things that are going on but you see the implied i mean obviously after one scene there's well a, 
Uh, it but, shows uh, it shows more than you'd expect. Yeah, it shows more than you expect. But I mean, obviously, you, you see, you see, you, you hear some of the atrocities happening. You see the clean up that he's doing, and you see sort of things happening in the corner of his eyes because it's in just off four three the academy ratio. You do see things coming from the peripherals of his eyes, and it's mainly from his perspective a lot of the time as well. So you do see a lot of things happening that you know it's just just out of frame, and that makes the horrors even worse because it's just so. Mm. so so unsettling the things that are going on there and the fact that he's managed to make something so fresh yet so personal within the holocaust and within world war Two in a genre that's been done to death that is a masterful achievement that he's done and it's just mm. it, it sticks with you i mean i was I, I just could not shake this from my head for at least a couple of days and it's still sticking with me today so that's got to be the, the achievement you know you, you cannot shake that feeling that it's just a brand brand new achievement in the genre mm. it, uh, joey yeah. you've been dying to see it what's your um, take man Man, just absolutely fascinated. I mean, the technique it cannot be debated of how well you know it does. Cause, you, like you say, you got these close-ups for like kind of academy ratio, and there's just all these horrors going on behind them. You know, the stuff that, in a weird way, even though you can kind of see it, even though you can just see it behind like behind the frame, it it still strangely leaves kind of leaves it to your imagination in a way, and it's just. A brilliant technique, yeah. But uh, the story itself, kind of in, in a way, does that that like those type of things because it kind of shows you the horrors of the Holocaust. But as well as that, it's kind of a mini character study as mm -hmm. well. Because yeah. remember, at the end of the film when we came out, we were, we were deciding was Saul in a weird way kind of a selfish, villain, or selfish he, yeah. or a villain, yeah. Because he pretty much, you know, he goes against all the other characters. This uprising, and they're constantly telling them what you're doing. You might get us, like, might get us killed. Even even people who like work for the Nazis in a way with the with the doctors. Like saying, no, if I do this, it might get us killed. But he, he doesn't really care, to be honest, because there's a famous quote in the film where he just says, we're already dead. Mm -hmm. So I think, in a way, it just kind of leads you to think, is he good or bad? or I don't know, but in my, in my opinion, I, I just kind of think... Just wants to be a just, good father just, just, son. just wants to do something, maybe like maybe something good, I suppose, yeah. to you know compare to some of the horrors that he thinks he's done. But uh, It's kind of the best thing you can do in, yeah. this, in this kind of circumstance, mm -hmm. isn't it? I mean, it's like the actor says. I mean, the Sonder Commando in their own way—they were just as much victims as yeah. anybody else, you know. And that, and during, the, as well as that fact. I mean, what was it? They got like seventy days. Mm. They were about, about, we worked for about seventy days before the Nazis decide to execute them, basically. And it's just yeah. a case of survival. Well, I mean, the, the leader of the Sonder Commando <laughs> in, the, in this film, and probably in real life as well, had to list seventy members of his group, didn't he? Mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And like, you can't imagine the horror and I mean. It's. I mean, the, the things that Rorick does with his the, the expressions. I mean, you, he he carries the film because obviously it is about Saul and his the, the quest to sort of do right by his son, or well, the, the moral dilemma between doing that or the or the uprising with the rest of the Jewish population in the concentration camps. But it's just, the fact that he does so much with his expressions is just testament. To the fact that he shows all of the the. the guilt and all of the sort of just the general feeling of melancholia and this defeat mm -hmm. in his face that you know he's, he's realized that they have there's nothing they can do they're in this inescapable hell and he just wants to do something for his son yeah. and it's an exceptional lacking achievement i would probably say the, the opening scenes probably some of the most effective oh, i've yeah. seen in, in cinema when it comes to the you know the holocaust the the sequence which is kind of hinted at in the trailer mm -hmm. when he's you know the, what happens happens and i'll not i'll not say what, what no. it was it's it's fairly effective it's uh we saw, we saw it on a friday night yeah we did yeah Woo, party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no it's 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 really really um it's a very special film. I think it it it's, mm. it's it elevated itself above a standard Holocaust film because you've got such a, a empathetic, but also, you know, it's it's a questionable character in Saul. Um, well, I, I'm, we've we've finally seen it. That's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But so, um, live up to the, live up to the expectations then. Yeah, most certainly. Fascinating film and technique and stuff. So, could you have picked a Palm Door winner out of this, Carol and Deepan? Uh, that's a good question because obviously I was I was ill during Dupan so I still have to see that but uh, out of these two I could not choose out of Carol I, and Son of Salt I probably yeah I probably prefer Carol and Son of Salt or Dupan but I I don't know yeah. <laughs> uh, obviously there's a lot more films than that I need to look at the full list probably yeah. but I, yeah. I, I mean I, I'm just I, going off the top of the big three yeah Son of Salt is an excellent film but I'd, I'd, I'd watch Carol again yeah mm -hmm. I don't think I'd be watching Son of Salt again anytime soon yeah. and the, the people behind us were kind of like of the same opinion they were like it was great but <laughs> would, this, would Son of Soul being quite as effective if it wasn't filmed in that aspect ratio? If it was full frame, do you think it would have still been as effective? No, no, no. I think the the tightness of the frame just is that you just so, can't escape. It's the so Holocaust, claustrophobic. You know, yeah, that, you yeah, can't, like, you can't, you can't escape. escape. And it leads to its intensity. You're trapped in Soul's journey. Yeah. Mm. Brilliant film. 
uh, that is Sun Assault. It's on at the Tyneside Cinema now, and it is a recommend from all of oh, us. Oh, absolutely. Oh, but, yeah. um, Need, must see. But I think Tread was caution. It is quite a grim, yeah, yeah. It's quite a grim sad film um, that, yeah, you need to be prepared for. I yeah. would say that much.